uh, the great pleasure this evening of, of introducing to you guys a man who has um, a great understanding of the fact that the Holy Spirit is always with him. Uh, there is a little scripture that comes to mind when I think of this man. There's a scripture that says, freely you receive and freely you should give. Uh, this evening, you guys are going to have the great privilege of receiving a great deal uh, from an amazing man who just so happens to be the moderator of Emmanuel Community. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, could you please put your hands together to give Pat Keedy a warm welcome uh, to the stage. trying to dance cool when you're a dad. Just own it. Bring on the dag dancing. Any dag dancers out there? Yeah, man. I used to love embarrassing my kids just by dancing really daggy. You know? You know, you got to own it. you got to be original. You just be yourself. Whatever. That's it. <laughs> How good is it to be here, hey? It's exciting. Press my little start button and we're off. So I'm going to ask for your attention for the next 20 minutes or so. I know there's lots of glitter on the ground, but just shake it off. That's right. That's it. Because I believe that tonight... God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to us. In this room, in this place, in this time, God wants to speak, speak to you, to your heart. And to do that, I'm going to have to, I'm going to ask you to, to lean in and to listen. So that you can hear when God speaks. It mightn't be what I'm saying at all. It might be in the cracks of something I'm saying. And God goes bang in your brain. So lean in. And let's be attentive. Let's give God this time. Because who knows what the creator of the universe is going to speak into your mind and your heart and your life tonight. So we have this uh, theme called becoming empty so that it can be filled I guess the question is filled with what? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, baby. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Now I want to talk about selective hearing. Does anyone have selective hearing? <laughs> what? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> selective hearing, mate, i gotta, I got to confess, I am the most selective, I mean... I'm a dad, and I shouldn't confess this because my kids are now not going to let me get away with it, but they know this about me. I suffer from selective hearing, and I always did because when I was a teenager growing up, I can still hear my mum's voice because I'd be down in my bedroom with my Walkman on, listen to my cassette tape, <laughs> Huey Lewis in the news, and uh, I could hear a voice from the other end of the house. Now, God bless my mum. Hey, mum, if you're listening, I love you. But when you're a teenager, you don't want to hear your mum. Because I knew what she was calling out for. Patrick! I'm like, who wants to hear their name call out? Patrick! And we live in the country, right? So I could be anywhere. I could be on a motorbike. I could be out in the shed. I could be anywhere. So she had to call out really loud, get my name. I knew what she wanted. She wanted me to do jobs. And jobs suck, and I was going to avoid that as much. So, so i got to confess, I'm like, can you hear something? Someone calling my name? <laughs> Must be someone else. I can't hear anything. Hey, that's all right. I didn't hear anything, because I knew what was behind the call. I knew what was behind the call. 
I wonder how many of us are using selective hearing because we know what's behind the call if we say yes. If we let God know we can hear him, what's he going to ask us to do? And that can be a little bit scary because it might mean stuff like vacuuming your room. Oh, picking up your dirty socks and putting them in the, all the way from here, all the way over to the other end of the universe of your room. It's so far. It's not fair that anyone should be asked to make that trek. Anyone feeling my pain? That's right. So I think that this version of selective hearing, you know what the root, the root of it is? Let's just name it. Let's confess. We're all sinners. Avoidance. We're avoiding. We're avoiding the voice that's calling. Because we don't want to do what they're going to know they're going to ask us to do. Put out the rubbish again. Feed the dogs again. Clean your room again. Uh, pack the dishwasher. Uh, again. You can write the script. So much better just to pretend you can't hear. Amen. Amen. I've got, got some passionate teenagers on this point. Okay. Another, another form of selective hearing. Stay with me now. Another form of selective hearing is, and I do this one still today. My whole family talk about it. They call me on about it. It's just the distraction. I'm a distracted selective hearer. And because I'm a musician, when I'm playing the piano, we've got a piano, my grandmother's piano in the room. When I'm playing the piano, and I'm sitting there playing the piano, they say, Patrick, dinner's ready. Patrick. No, they can stand in front of me. Patrick. Yeah? And I pretend, I nod and raise my eyebrows like I'm listening. Uh-huh. And they say, uh-huh. Yeah. And then they say, do you hear what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. All good. Then you try and repeat back. I didn't hear a word they're saying. I wasn't listening because I was distracted. So sometimes we don't hear because we're just busy doing stuff we love. And it's distracting. And that's cool. Some of you know this because you've got this little thing called mobile phones. And when your parents are saying, hey, David. <laughs> David. No. Oh, but you know what? I reckon your parents are worse. How many times have I been busted? Come on, parents, fess up. Don't make out like you're holier than thou. We got these little mobile devices too. Dad. 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 Uh, mate, distraction's a big factor. Come on, let's all admit. Another one is just forgetfulness. I have selective hearing because I forget stuff. Does anyone else forget stuff? I forget stuff all the time. My wife, and she was just up here, she could, she could vouch for this. She says, honey, I've already told you this. It's like painful. I can see her furrowed brow. Just like, oh, seriously? I told you last week that we're having Ignite Conference this week. I'm like, I, how am I expected to remember everything? So, if you have a forgetful person in your life nearby, just give a massage on the shoulder and say, it's okay. We love you anyway. It's okay. Sometimes she, we hear it. We hear it and it does go in one ear and it does register, but it's got a time span because it's not that important to take up memory, right? So when people say, didn't you remember that we were going to go out for dinner and you go... That's right, I do remember that. <laughs> Another one, a type of uh, selective hearing that I see, it's probably not selective, it's just self-selecting. Does anyone here wake up in the morning and you're a breakfast zombie? Any breakfast zombies? I see this in my house, and I admit I was one for many years, because you're so bloody tired, because you've got to get up and go to school or work. And how can anyone be expected to think before coffee? Right? All the teachers are like, amen. How can you expect us to teach? <laughs> and so you can't hear because your brain is dead. You're in zombie state. And you're just like, people tell you stuff and you expect you to remember. And you're like, I'm sorry, what were you saying? I can't even think. So, when we're talking about hearing God speak to us tonight, 
Can we all admit that at different times we have selective hearing and hear a bit of talking going on even right now? But can we all admit that at times we have selective hearing and we tune out because we get distracted or we forget or we're brain dead or we're just wired that way and Jesus loves us anyway. Tonight I want to take us on a Bible study. You want to go to Bible study? Yes, well, yeah, it's exciting. Come on now. I'm going to take us into some ancient prophecy because if you want to hear the answer to the question that was raised, we are empty to be filled and the answer is filled with what? If you want to find out the answer to the filled with what, you got to come with me. Okay? you got to come with me on this little tour through the Bible. I'm going to take us back to a prophet called Isaiah and when we found the writings of Isaiah, we put little numbers in front of it to try and help us find little parts of it easy. And they're called chapters. And I'm going to take you to Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 to 6. Even now, some of you are distracted and tuning out. So I'm going to challenge you. Yeah, lean in, lean in. Because this is important. This is for you and you need to hear it. Isaiah prophesied about the coming of the person they called the Messiah, the Messiah, the one who was the anointed king who was going to deliver God's people from slavery and, he was going to, and all their oppressors, and he was going to be this new king, righteous king who was going to deliver them from all their hardships, and they believed in it, and he wrote about it, and he said, your God is coming. How many of you are even aware that that's going to be fulfilled in this room tonight. I want to say to you right now, this is a prophecy for you and your heart tonight. Your God is coming. He's coming to you. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Your God is coming, and you aren't even aware of it. He's come, but he's coming again. Your God is coming. He's coming to save you, said Isaiah. And he said, and... When he comes, listen to this, he will open the eyes of the blind and he will unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame, people who are crippled and can't walk, they're going to leap like a deer. When was the last time you leapt like a deer? Okay. You like that? A little bit of dag dancing for the dads. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak, who can't speak, will sing for joy. This is a prophecy, guys. This was someone, the Holy Spirit, speaking to them thousands and thousands of years ago, and they're wondering, probably even wondering as he's saying it, what am I proclaiming? What am I saying? I wonder, where is this going to end? They couldn't see ahead and see 2018. I want to fast track now to where this was fulfilled in the New Testament by Jesus, okay? In Mark, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7. And this is the story. It says, There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowds, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Ew. That's really interesting. Jesus put his fingers into his ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. Okay, some of you think, I haven't heard this story before. It's true. Jesus was a very earthy God. A very earthy God man. He spat on his head and put it on the guy's tongue. I haven't seen someone do that as a sign of love recently. But it's a powerful symbol. From the power of my own saliva, I'm going to release your tongue. And he looked into heaven. And with a deep sigh, everyone who a deep sigh. Oh, that's right. When do you do deep sighs? When the exam is over. When you're frustrated, when you're fed up, when you're like, I've had enough. Come on already. Jesus is like that. And he's feeling the pain. He's like, oh my gosh. Enough already. Let's do this. And he, with a deep sigh, he says to him, Ephthatha. 
Ephthatha. Say it with me. Ephthatha. Which means be opened. Be opened. Ephthatha means? Ephthatha means? What's the word? Ephthatha. That's right. But here's the thing. God doesn't speak and stuff doesn't happen when God speaks. And if you're listening and you ask him to speak, when he speaks, stuff happens. It says, at this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was released and he began to speak freely. Ephthatha. Do you know, so here we've got a man whose ears are unplugged and his tongue is released and he's able to speak freely. And it's a miracle. Guys, there's people in this room, your eyes are blind, but you don't realize it. Your ears are plugged, but you don't realize it. Your tongue is locked up, but you don't realize it. And tonight, God wants the scales to fall from your eyes. He wants the plugs to be pulled out of your ears. And he wants to break the chain on your tongue so it can be released. That's what he wants to do in this room tonight. Are you ready? I'm deadly serious. Are you all ready? And are you all... Okay, okay, you said it. You said it. Because Jesus said, according to your faith, it will be done for you. If you eagerly desire something and you press in and you have faith, Jesus promises it will be done for you. So let's raise our level of faith in this room tonight. That the miracles can happen. That, that physical uh, sickness and healing can be healed in Jesus' name. He is just as present now as he was 2,000 years ago. Nothing's changed. His Holy Spirit is still real. St. Paul was a, was a man who, who, who when they said um, he was on these, and when he saw a vision of Jesus, the vision of Jesus blinded him. It was so glorious. Blinded him. And it, and it showed him that he was actually blind in his heart and he didn't realize. And then it says that uh, the Holy Spirit sent this man called Ananias to him and, and he said, lay his hands on him. And it says when Ananias laid his hands on St. Paul, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And when he laid his hands on this guy, he wasn't even called Saint yet. He wasn't called Paul yet. He was called Saul. He was a murderer. He was a bad guy. He wasn't in God. You would think he wasn't in God's good books, but God put his finger on his chest and said, I want you. He's doing that to some of you in this room tonight. He's saying, I want you whether you think you're worthy or not. And when they laid hands on him and said, receive the Holy Spirit, the scales fell from his eyes and he could see his life for what it was. And he could at the same time see his future for where God was calling him. And his life was never the same. Who wants life the same all the time anyway? So... Let us become empty so that we can be filled. Filled with what? The Holy Spirit. Filled with what? The Holy Spirit. What does God want? To, it's good to be empty, but God wants us to empty it out so that we can be filled, but not filled with, well, I don't know, anything if you got. He wants to fill us with himself. And the way God fills us with himself is through his spirit, which is alive and active and present and powerful. And some of you don't know how powerful yet, but you're going to find out soon. Amen. Amen. So tonight, God wants the scales to fall from our eyes so we can see. Some of us need help to see the lifestyle we're in, but until the scales fall, we don't even recognize it. Some of us need, need to see the truth about how much we're worth, but until the scales fall from our eyes, we're not going to be able to see it. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to help that happen. Some of us need our ears to be open to God's call because he's calling you for a holy purpose. He's got a, he's got a design and a plan and a call in your life. You're thinking, yeah, me, not me. That's surely someone else, someone holy. No, he's like, no, you. He's putting his finger on your chest. And you're like, nah, seriously, what? He's like, yes, but if our ears are plugged, we're like, la, 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 la. I can't hear you, Jesus. I know you're calling me to great things, but I can't hear you. Everyone put your hand over your ears. It's hard to hear. That's what it feels like. La, 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 la. Right? No more. God wants to unplug our ears so that we can hear him calling us to a great life, to a greatness of life, like Mother Teresa says, but begins with small things. But it's still a great life. And it's got to start where you are. How dare we think too small of ourselves 
or how dare we think too small of God's call on our life. We don't have the opportunity, we don't have the right, and we don't have the time. We have to dream big, people. Young people, we need you to dream big for the church to ever become where it's, what it's going to be and what it's going to do in the church and, and in the world. And Jesus needs you to think big about yourself if you're ever going to make the impact that you're going to make. So hear this from Jesus tonight and from the Holy Spirit. You are more than you think. You're worth more than you think. And you're capable of more than you think in the power of the Holy Spirit. If you yield to the Holy Spirit. I'm not doing this to rev you up. I'm trying to speak truth. If you yield to the Holy Spirit, that's possible. If you don't yield and you say, nah, good, I'm thanks. Well, she's all right, bro, not for me. Well, then it'll only be as far as you go in your own strength. But in our own strength, we always hit a wall. We can only go so far. You know, last night we heard Father Rob, who's talking about, besides Katie. (laughs) Oh, Lord. We heard Father Rob talk about the empty tomb, this whole theme of empty, and God wants us to walk out of an empty tomb. So I have a question for you tonight. I have a question for you. How do you get an empty tomb? You get an empty tomb, if you're a dead body in a tomb, you get an empty tomb by the body coming back to life, standing up and going, hey, I'm alive, and walking out. That's how you get it. But hang on, pedal back with me. How do you get a body waking up and coming back to life? It needs to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It can't get dead bodies raised to life unless they're filled with the Holy Spirit. So you need an injection, a big injection gun going into the body and it raises to life and it walks out and you have an empty tomb. Guys. Guys. There are people in this room, I've said this a couple of times, you are in a tomb and you don't even realize it. God wants to raise you from the dead tonight. He wants to fill you with his spirit like an injection that raises your body to life and so you can walk out of the tombs. Sometimes the tombs you're in is the, is the cage you've placed yourself in around your own limitations. Or it's the cave that other people have placed you in. They put you in a corner, they put you in a little box and they said, you're this person, that's who you'll ever be. We've already worked out who you are and we're telling you who you are. Other people love to make us fit into their box, but tonight Jesus says, I don't give a rat's what other people think about you tonight. I want to fill you with my spirit so you can raise up and become who I made you to be and then you walk out of that tomb that they made for you. Amen. How do you get an empty tomb? Your body needs to be filled with the Spirit. I'll never forget the time I experienced my tongue being released. We want scales to fall. We want our ears to be opened. And God wants, by His Holy Spirit tonight, to release your tongues, to release your mouths so you can sing His praise like that old prophecy said in Isaiah 35. I'll never forget as a time when I was a young man, I was trying to discover my faith. And I, um, I was traveling overseas at the time in my 20s. I was probably trying to work out how much am I meant to get into this Jesus thing. I don't want to be too full on. I don't want to be Jesus freak. But I'm hearing all these stories and I'm seeing all these other people who are living a life for Jesus and look so attractive. I'm like, but I want what they got. How do I get that? And I started hearing stories about this thing called the Holy Spirit. And as I started hearing about the Holy Spirit, I started to get a thirst for like, man, I want what they got. How do I get me some of that? And then I was at this little prayer meeting in London, of all places. I'm in London, and I'm at this prayer group of a youth group. And um, they, there wasn't a Catholic church, by the way. And uh, they said, we're going to pray for this person. Let's come over. And they pointed out a few people. said, can you come and pray for this guy? This guy said, I need some prayer. Can you come? And they said, yeah, okay, we're going to lay hands on you. No worries. I can lay hands on you. It's easy. And then they said, and they said, well, what we're going to do now is we're going to pray really loudly in tongues. You know what I'm talking about? There's this thing called tongues. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And it sounds a little weird because people are talking in a language that's not English. And it's not even not English. It's not necessarily a language in, in the human vocabulary. It could be, but it's not necessarily. And so that can sound a bit freaky when you hear it for the first time. I'm like, ah, oh, back out. I don't do that. I don't know anything about that stuff. You've got the wrong guy. But I couldn't backpedal because my hand was already on the guy. 
And they said, here we go, one, two, three. And they just started. I'm like, sheeks. <laughs> Holy moly. And I'll never forget it. And I'm going, praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus, because I only can say a couple of words, and I'm thinking, I don't know what else to say. Praise you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus. And my brain is like, that's not a lot, mate. You're going to run out real fast. I'm like, I know. <laughs> praise you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. 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 And And then something happened like a motorbike starting, like It was a bit wet to start, you know, like a wet motor. But once it got going, the revs felt great. And man, it was like I got shifted into autopilot or a whole new gear. Something went from here like, and I was released that night in the Holy Spirit in a way I had not experienced before. It was an experience that you may hear referred to as baptized in the Spirit. Now, all of us, everyone who's been baptized, we receive the Holy Spirit in baptism and again in confirmation, but we need to keep on asking God to release in us the grace of the Holy Spirit within us and to baptize us in His Spirit once again. Thanks, Steve. So, are you up for it? Are you up for it? (laughs) It's not about speaking in tongues like my story was, but what it is about is being open to whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life and allowing your tongue to be released so you can proclaim His praises. And I start to see it already here. You guys up the front here, when the band's going and they're rocking out and the lights are down, you're all going, yeah, praise Jesus. But the Lord wants to unlock a spirit of praise within the next generation of Catholics in this country because you get a spirit of praise going in your spirit and you will change history because there'll be an engine going inside here that's like, and that's what he wants to get happening in the church and the world so you can be on fire and change the world around you. God gives his spirit to change the lives of other people in the world. That's why he gives it, not to give us good fluffy feelings or spiritual buzzes. So tonight there's going to be an opportunity for all of you to seek prayer or even just where you are to call upon the Holy Spirit to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit so you can rise from the dead and walk out of your tomb. And I don't know about you, but I've got my own tombs that I want to walk out of tonight. I've got my own caves I've got my own boundaries that other people put me in, and I'm going to walk out of them, but will you come with me? So, you might have a question. How is the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead going to get in me? Romans 11 says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. How? Through his spirit. It's the biggest, best-kept secret in the world. If you get filled with God's Spirit, the same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead will enter you and will raise you to new life and set you on an adventure you had no idea was possible. How is the Spirit that that raised Jesus from the dead going to get in me, you might ask? It's really simple. You want me to tell you? You ask. You ask. That's all you're going to do. All I'm going to ask you to do tonight is to ask God for His Spirit to fill you and to enter you with His power. Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ephthatha. Ephthatha. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Some of you are going, I want to know where my direction is life. I want to know where I'm headed. Well, knock and the door asks to be filled with the Spirit. Some of us, we pray for stuff, but instead of praying, Lord, where are you leading me? I feel like tonight the Lord would say, just ask to be filled with my Spirit, and I'll take care of where I'm going to lead you. Some of us say, I want stuff to be healed in my family. That's good to pray, but pray to be filled with His Spirit, and He'll take care and use you to be a, a source of healing in your family. There's so many things we want to have happen, but tonight the Lord would say, ask me to be filled with my Spirit, and I will make those things happen in a greater way than you can do by yourself. So... Jesus went on to say, listen, listen, my father is a good father. He's a good, good father. It's who you are. It's a good song. Right? Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah, okay. We won't get into that one. And I'm loved by you because it's who I am. That's true. How much more will your father in heaven give 
the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. To simply surrender themselves and say, I'm not going to make this too complicated up here. I'm just going to unlock my brain for a bit. I'm just going to open my body and my brain. And I'm going to go, if you want to fill me with your spirit, I give you permission, Holy Spirit, to move in me and to work in me and to flow through me however you want to. There's some lyrics of a song, Amen, Your Worship, have been playing over the last couple of days, which have been rocking my world. And they're going to put it on the screen. And it says, I love it. And this is what, a, uh, this is what we're going to sing tonight. So for, as quietly as you can, I just want everyone just to stand to their feet where you are. Like a desert storm, blow into this room. When the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, it was like a mighty wind, a violent wind that filled the room. And it says, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. No one was left out. And I just claim that for tonight. All will be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is not here for some and not others. We just experience it in different ways. And that's okay. Like a desert storm tonight, Lord, we pray. Blow into this room. Just stand still where you are. I know you're moving around. But let's just close our eyes and lift our hands. Focus upon Jesus, the one who's ascended to the right hand of the Father and said, I'm going to go to the Father. And when I do, I'm going to send the promised gift which you've heard me speak about, which is the Holy Spirit. And He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Lord, we call upon your fire on this day, the feast day of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and one of the other ones. <laughs> and in heaven where the angels are, the readings in our Catholic church said today that there was a chariot of fire that the ancient ones sat on and there were wheels of fire and there was a river of fire that flowed out from beneath the throne. And I want to declare that tonight that river of fire is going to flow out among you and over you and through you and in you. So open your mouth and drink the fire from heaven tonight. Like a desert storm, blow into this room. Come Holy Spirit. I just want to invite you to say with me, come Holy Spirit, out loud now, all together. Come Holy Spirit. Be sincere in it, don't fake it. Just hold up your hands, close your eyes, forget about the people around you. Let's call upon the Spirit. Come, come Spirit of the living. Come, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of fire, Spirit of fire, kingdom language, fire of Pentecost today. Let's keep going, let's keep opening ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Be open to anything, God will not disappoint you, He will only do good things in your life and in your heart tonight.